If you've ever, you know, used the internet, which you've probably done considering you're watching this video, you've almost certainly typed in a uniform resource locator or URL to get where you're going online. But while some are simple, like linusectips.com or whitehouse.gov, full-length URLs can look awfully confusing. Why do we need HTTP in there, and what are all those ampersands, question marks, and pound, or excuse me, hash signs doing? It's a good question. Let's demystify the ingredients of your typical web address, starting with the beginning of the scheme. The most familiar will probably be HTTP, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, the set of commands that handles the transmission of web pages. But there are other schemes as well. If you've ever clicked on an email address, you might notice that the link starts with mail to, a scheme that tells the browser to open up your email client so you can fire off a message. There's also FTP or file transfer protocol, which is used to send, well, files, as you probably guessed, to and from remote servers, and even IRC, which allows you to connect directly to a chat room. The next part of a typical URL is usually a domain name, the name of a website like Amazon.com or Microsoft.com. The .com, .net, or .org at the end is called a top-level domain, or TLD, which you can think of as the main categories that sort every website on the internet and help route requests through a certain group of servers to get you to the correct website. Typically, .com will indicate a commercial website of some sort. .org indicates a nonprofit organization, and there are plenty of TLDs that indicate sites associated with a certain country, like .us or .uk. More recently, country-based TLDs have been used in so-called domain hacks, like u2.be, which allows links to YouTube videos to be shorter. This doesn't mean, however, that the site has anything to do with the Kingdom of Belgium. Much of the rest of the URL, the part that is separated by slashes, indicates the path or the specific location of the page or other piece of content on the specific website. Each slash indicates another subfolder, kind of like how files on your computer storage drive are organized. As for question marks, these make a URL hard to read, but their existence actually makes a lot of sense. They indicate a query defined by the user. For example, if you type a search into Google, you'll see your string in the results page URL after the question mark symbol, which tells the server to execute that search. If a URL has multiple queries, these will be separated by ambersands, showing that the browser is relaying multiple pieces of information to the website, such as what kind of browser you're using, or whether you were referred to a page from a certain site. And if you've ever clicked a link just to have it send you somewhere else on the same page, that was probably done through a fragment, indicated by a pound sign. Fragments can mark specific spots on a web page, but can also indicate other things, like the folder you're looking at in Gmail. URLs can also incorporate a few rarely seen variations. For example, if you're trying to access a website that requires a login and password, some sites will allow you to just enter the username and password in the URL directly, logging you in automatically. Convenient if you need to quickly share a link to a protected site, but not the best thing for security as your browser history will show your password in plain text. <laughs> And if you've ever visited a site based in a country that doesn't use Latin characters, like Greece or China, you might see a really weird domain name that includes XN dot. This means that the original characters were converted into a domain name compatible with the DNS, so computers worldwide can view these pages. But if the path after the domain name contains special characters, you'll probably see these displayed with percent encoding, which is also sometimes used for other symbols. For example, percent sign 24 corresponds to a dollar sign. So I hope this helped unpack the mystifying stuff you see in web addresses. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get back to my IRC discussion on whether .ninja or .meme are actually good top-level domains. I think they are, but some other unscrupulous people disagree. TunnelBear VPN lets you tunnel to up to 20 different countries, allowing you to browse the internet and use online services as if you're in that other country. 
They have easy to use apps for iOS, Android, PC, and Mac, and they also have a Chrome extension. Just choose a country in the app, turn Tunnel Bear on, and watch as your bear tunnels your internet connection to your new location. When you do turn Tunnel Bear on, two things happen. Your connection gets encrypted with AES 256-bit encryption, and your public IP address gets switched, so you show up as if you're in that country. They also have a top-rated privacy policy and do not log user activity. You can try out TunnelBear VPN with 500 megabytes of free data and no credit card required. And if you choose to get a year of unlimited data, you can save 10% by going to tunnelbear.com slash Linus. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, like it. If you dislike this video, dislike it. Get subscribed and hit the little bell to see all of the tech quickie videos that we have. Check out Channel Super Fun because they are fun and super. And I'm going to go now so that Alex can walk, walk, walk by. Alex, go ahead. There we go. Best part of the video. 10 out of 10. Would we'll do it again. Bye, guys.